Okay, this is going to be part two, and here you can see everything in the cabinet is fully uh, wired, and <laughs> it's a giant mess, but it all makes sense to me. Um, it would look much cleaner if I had some of those cable raceways, uh, but unfortunately I didn't have room for it, and so wires are just kind of routed in the most convenient way for me to access. Now, I'm never going to sell this enclosure or I don't want to say never, but it's highly unlikely anybody else will ever be in here or ever troubleshooting this. So uh, that's kind of the way, uh, <laughs> That's kind of, this is the way I approached it. Um, nothing's really labeled either, but luckily I know where everything is. So things I didn't talk about in the last video or that I said that I would touch on a little bit more are the relays, uh, the... Um, uh, the shunt for the DC motor control, which really doesn't matter because it has nothing to do with the lathe, but I figure I'll go over it anyway. And I believe everything else pretty much is wired up. So uh, <clears throat> as far as the relays go, over here on the left, you can see I've got uh, five switches set up. And what each switch does, um, well, I'll just tell you. So the top switch, uh, turns on the 5 volt 12 volt power supply and the way that it does that is with these two leads right here going to the green and black wires that I pointed out in the last video um, there's already a relay inside the 5 volt 12 volt uh, computer power supply so when I flip that switch it turns on it flips the relay inside the power supply and my 5 volt supply comes on and I'll show you that here in just a minute Switch number two turns on a relay over here, and I, I don't recall which one, and that uh, switches on power to the 48 volt power supply. And then switch number three connects these two pins, which are the enabled pins for the breakout board. There's five volts coming out of this, uh, this side, and so when you flip the switch, it just puts five volts into this pin, the second one over, and uh, yeah, the breakout board turns on. Switch number three, uh, I didn't need to use double pull, double throw switches for, or I mean for switch number four and five, because the way I ended up doing it was I routed one wire, which is the purple. All my purple wires are the voltage wires. All my green wires are the grounds. So this purple wire goes over to two different relays. And when I flip on switch number four, those two relays turn on and turn on my DC power supply. When I flip on switch number five, uh, again, you can see just one purple wire, but it runs two relays, which turn on both 110 legs of the VFD. Uh, that is pretty much it for the switches. The reason this switch exists is um, right now I don't have the tachometer hooked up to my mill. But when I do finally get it hooked up, what this switch will do is I'll switch it one way and it will become the mills tachometer. And if I switch it the other way, it'll become the lathe tachometer. And then I installed, I put places or I put switches in for uh, three more um, holes for three more switches in case there are other functions. Like for instance, this one could be the limit switches. This one, if I, if I flip it, it could be limit switches are activated for the mill or the lathe. And I forget what these other two were going to be. Uh, but um, I, I don't have limit switches on the mill, and right now the tack on the mill is just the, the factory installed one that's on the actual machine. So uh, eventually I'll get that wired up. Uh, up here in the corner you can see my uh, ammeter, my voltmeter, and my pot. These are for the, for the mill DC power supply. And, um, or the DC drive, and I guess I'm not going to really get into those. Well, I'll tell you, the reason why they exist is because this power supply, it's a KBMM uh, 225D, and it has a 90-volt and a 180-volt DC settings. I'm using the 90-volt because my motor is rated at 130 volts. So it is going to be possible to eventually tune this drive uh up to a higher voltage. I don't know if I can get all the way to 130, but that will allow me to pour more voltage into the into the motor. Um, I did try a, running it in the 180 setting and then just not turning the speed up, but it still creates way too many amps, even at low RPM, um, the way it's currently configured. And so it ended up uh, <laughs> overheating the motor and I could smell it getting warm way before I saw smoke 
I mean, I didn't see smoke. I, I could smell it getting warm and immediately shut it off. So uh, that's something that needs to be addressed. I'm going to go ahead and move the camera here real quick. And I'll point out a couple of things on the VFD. So you can see uh, U, V, and W are my three, are the three uh, hotlines for the three phase motor on the lathe. Um, this white one over here is neutral, this, this line, which is the pin number nine, it looks like. And then over on this side, there's a red and a white, and those are my, uh, those are my, that's my 220 coming in. Now, really cool thing about the Han Yang lathe, and, and I didn't know this and I didn't mention it in the earlier videos, um, cause I didn't know it until later, but this VFD, you can see I've got three pins set up right here. And I don't know if you can actually see how those are labeled. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. Looks like that's about it. So the green wire on top is ACM and the black and white wires on the bottom are RS negative for white and RS positive for black. And somebody has written a driver to control this VFD directly through Linux CNC. And is what that allows you to do is instead of using pins on the breakout board to control direction and speed, uh, you can do everything over a, a serial port. And so I have a serial adapter and I'll go ahead and roll in a, a picture here and I'll check the spreadsheet. If this part number is not on the spreadsheet, I'll add it while I'm uploading this video. Uh, there's a part number for hooking it up to serial and now Linux CNC controls the VFD uh, over the Modbus protocol, which uh, I know nothing about. Uh, I'm, it's amazing that somebody took the time to write this driver for Linux CNC and it's fantastic. Um, I can control everything. The only thing you can't do is program it. So all the programming still has to take place on the VFD itself. And I'll be rolling out a separate video just how to program the VFD uh, because there's about 20 different settings, I don't know, 10 to 20 different settings that need to be made inside the VFD. I mean, just in the, in the software. And uh, the, one of the reasons why I initially said go with the Tico drive was because lots of guys online have written about it um, and it's very well known and well used. The other thing is, is the manual for the Han Yang is just terrible. It's, it's so difficult to understand. And I spent, I mean, I watched what videos there were on YouTube already, plus spent a ton of time trying to figure out how to program this thing. And it's time consuming. So that's why I'll be making a video dedicated just to programming this VFD. Uh, I think the video after this one is going to be the three phase conversion. And then the video after that will probably be the VFD. So uh, yeah, real simple. And let's see, I'm gonna talk about the shunt on the DC drive. Let me move the camera one more time. For those of you that don't know how a shunt works, and this is gonna be difficult to see because of this nightmare of wires. Um, this purple wire right here, I don't know if you can see this large purple wire. There's a purple and a white, okay? These are going to the motor, uh, the DC motor. So what happens is, is the purple wire comes in on one side of the shunt and then it comes out the other side of the shunt. You can see the lugs. Okay, so there's one of the lugs coming in. There's the lug going out and then that goes up to the drive. Okay, now is what that does is there's a piece of metal. There's a black piece of metal in between um, these two lugs. It's really thin right there. And that piece of metal gives the shunt a known voltage. And then the ammeter is made for that voltage. So the ammeter is really just a voltmeter because what we're doing is, is we're taking these two inner lugs, this green and purple small wires, and we're running those up to the ammeter. So we're measuring a voltage across this known uh, shunt, basically, and then the ammeter uh, operates just like a voltmeter does. That way we don't actually have to run um, the giant purple cable that is you know, the motor power, we don't have to run this through the ammeter itself, we run it through the shunt. And then uh, the other part of the uh, DC motor is this big white cable. So I had said in the last video that there were going to be three piggybacks up here. Uh, it ended up not being that way. And let me change the angle of the camera real quick. You can see here, there is a small green wire and 
Where's the other one? Where's the small purple wire? Mm, I don't know which one it is. You can't see it. Oh, right here. So there's this small purple wire and this small green wire. And they are also, um, they're just spliced in with the two leads that go to the motor. And those are my voltmeter. The, the, these two little purple and green wires. So that one goes to my voltmeter and the other one goes to my ammeter. Okay, so let me back you up again. All right, let's see. What else did we not discuss? Oh, let's, let's zoom in on the uh, relay module for just a moment. So if you look right here, let me zoom in on that. You can see these little purple loops. So basically, these are the purple lines I was talking about that run two relays at the same time. So from a switch over here on the door, one of these purple wires comes over and plugs into to like relay number one. Let me get something tiny I can point with. So uh, this black pin right here is relay number one. And then there's one right below it, which is relay number two. Let me move this even again and see if I can. Okay, that's better. So here's relay number one. And right below it, that's relay number two. So the purple wire loops into between relays one and two. So when I flip a switch, it turns on relays one and two. When I flip it, when I that's switch number four. When I flip switch number five, you can see there's another purple loop. It switches on relays four and five. And then the fifth relay I'm using is this one down here, and this is the one that turns on the 48 volt power supply. Okay, so three switches run five relays. And then the other two uh, switches on the front panel are again to turn on the five volt power supply and then the other one for the, uh, to enable the power supply. Um, let me show you the fan filters I've got real quick because I, I briefly mentioned those, I think. So you can see this, this fan is mounted to the cabinet and there's this white piece of filter. These are register filters. Um, you buy them in like the heating HVAC set, uh, part of your hardware store. And uh, they come in a big package. So the reg for those of you who don't know what a register is, uh, when you have heat or AC in your house, that vent that is over, so, you know, so you don't step down into the <laughs> into the ducting, uh, the vent is called a register. And so you can buy register filters, and and I just cut them and screwed them down. You can also see that there's some grommets. I use some more of those little grommets, kind of as mounting pads uh, to space. That space is the fan up which was important on this fan because it's a puller and the fan blades were gonna touch the, the register filter. The, the reason I did this, the only reason is for dust, mostly dust, but also spiders a little bit because spiders will climb in anywhere and uh, you'll end up with dead spiders inside your cabinet. So uh, that's what the filters are all about. Let me show you the front of the panel and I think we're gonna call this video good. Okay, let's see, I gotta zoom you out. So here you can see my uh, volt and ammeters. Well, it looks like the ammeters, the top one, and the voltmeter, and, uh, and then down here are all the switches. So I'll let you hear how loud it is when I turn all this on. So, um, uh, let's see, should I do it with the door open or closed? I'll do it with the door open. Okay, so I'm gonna switch on, uh, I'm gonna go from top to bottom. So here is the five volt power supply, five volt, 12 volt computer power supply. All right, you saw some LEDs come on. Doesn't really make very much noise. This next one's the 48 volt power supply. This one's got a fast fan, so it makes a lot of noise. Okay, now we're gonna enable the breakout board, those two pins down there, and you'll see a green light come on. That green light over there. Okay, now I'm gonna turn on the VFD. This is by far the loudest part of the machine, and it takes a second to load up. There we go. So there it is, that's the machine. Now, if I shut off the uh, VFD and turn on the, uh, the DC drive, you won't hear, it'll, it'll be much quieter. So here's the VFD off. Wait for it to shut down. Okay, now when I turn on the DC drive, you'll hear a couple of real, you'll hear the relays click over here. Well, maybe you didn't hear them. I heard them, but you probably heard the click of the... Oh, that's the VFD again, dang it. <laughs> I don't have labels on anything yet. Okay, here we go. No, you didn't hear that click either. 
Okay, so there's the uh, DC drive is on, and I don't know if you can see it. There's a green LED right there. So that's it. it I mean, it looks like a total giant mess, uh, but it's it's not. Everything's grounded really nicely, and um, yeah, I'm excited. So I mean, so far it's worked really, really well. Let's see if we can see these ammeters, this ammeter and voltmeter turn on. I've never actually used that. Let's see. Let me move you over here. Oh yeah. So there we are at uh, 50, 60, 70, that's actually 80 volts and about 3 amps on the, on the, uh, on the mill and that's of course no load other than the motor itself, you know, the spindle of course. Uh, go ahead and shut everything off. And that's it. So uh, I'll go ahead and post video number one of this series, get this one uh, put together and post this one. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next video.